This week on Three Sides of the Coin, we talk about unpopular your unpopular kiss opinions. We're not doing it all over again. Although we should, that would just piss some people off. But we talk about some of yours. It leads us into a discussion about the peaks and valleys of an artist's career. This is kind of a fun discussion that we have kind of for us old timers. It's it's for us grandpas rocking on our front porch right now. You know, you kids go play with your internet right now. Hold we're on, talking. hold on. Guys, we're also going to dispel some fucking revisionist history bullshit that we sometimes see from, I hate to say it, from the younger crowd. Guys, we were there. We saw it as We were there. Happened. It has something to do with the elder. <laughs> we set your asses straight. <laughs> this is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things... I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. You looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise? T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We ship worldwide. Hey, three sides of the coin. You got Mike, Tommy, Mark. We took last week off. I don't know. We just kind of felt like we wanted to. It was just, it's been crazy for all of us. Tommy's been on vacation. Mark's got work. He's a new grandfather. Thule is finishing summer school, freaking starting school next week. Schedules are just like out the window for all of us. So, um last week was one of those where we just took it off plus we just kind of let the unpopular kiss opinion run wild and tommy we're not going to make you read any comments because we could be here for five hours reading those oh i'm watching them as they keep popping up i'm like holy shit everyone's got but i i i yeah i do i do have to say first of all this was probably the greatest homework assignment we've ever given out in, in 10 plus years tw- 12 years of doing this years. the homework yeah. of sharing your unpopular kiss opinion now, did did we think we'd get a few responses of course but oh my god it seriously it's still blew going up on. it's still it's finally starting to trickle down to maybe a f- couple a day but man, we were getting multiples an hour of people coming in here. And yes, there was some stupid ones. There were people trying to be smart, but there was a lot of great unpopular opinions that people were sharing. And I don't I I can just personally say I'm so excited to see that level of fan engagement and talking and sharing views i thought that was just beautiful to see all that i agree i also want to steal a line from paul stanley i think you guys will appreciate how come all you guys who are picking the elder in their top three albums where were you in 81 did you buy it did you buy it (laughs) look i'm not i'm not if you think again because it's all you know subjective you if you say it's the greatest album, that, then go ahead. I, I don't care. I mean, I could, if I wanted to be analytical, I could go this, 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 and this. No, it's not. You're just saying it. So, but anyways, take that out of there. Neither here nor there. I I actually sort of chuckle when I see anybody who puts that even in their top ten. Guys, they couldn't. They couldn't even fucking tour behind it. That's how bad it did. Nobody wanted to touch Kiss. No. Again, yeah. timeline is everything, and we've talked about this. The three of us were there when this happened. Nobody was touching Kiss in the U.S., and it was an embarrassment to be a Kiss fan. And more, when, more all than the that, people, when all the people who hate them start telling me they love that record, you know there's a problem. I, I when I see comments like as good as the wall or you know what I mean? I, guys either on Gene something and Paul or on something. would tell you that that thing 
didn't come anywhere close to the wall in any sort of way. And, and, and just as a musician, those songs are not structurally incredible like some of the songs on the wall are. And didn't, guys, look, if you want to hate on Pink Floyd or think I'm an idiot for saying, I really don't care because I could sit here if we were sitting at a bar, I could tell you, look, the wall is eons and decades and light years more advanced in every sort of creative way. You know, basically the elder was fueled by a coked out fucking producer who was out of his mind on drugs at the time. And Gene and Paul's ego trying to go, let's show the critics what we can do. Yep. And guess what? You you add those two things together and you got the elder. It's disaster. And it's exactly as exactly as someone would have pointed out. And before you anybody are and, and, and I want to tell you this too. Do I like the elder? Yeah, it's it's enjoyable. It's it's unique. It's different. But enough with the greatest fuck. No, it's not. It's again. If it was the greatest thing and, and I'm missing something, then where were you in 81? How come it didn't sell? How come they couldn't tour? What? There's a reason for it. It's an anomaly. That's all. I, and, I, I, I love the comments. The couple people who are like, yeah, the, the Elder would have been a successful <laughs> album if they had actually done the movie for it. Or if, if the movie oh. had come out beforehand. I'm like I'm thinking... You know why the movie didn't happen? Because the album sucked. That screenplay that was written got shelved the second that album had the plug pulled on it by the record label saying, this is garbage. It was over. No movie was going to save it. No tour was going to save it. No change in costumes was going to save it. No different vocalists would save it. Nothing was saving that because you know we can all say what we what we want about Gene and Paul, but when the two guys in the band sit back and go, we made a big fucking mistake with that album. It doesn't matter what the fans think. These guys who actually recorded it were there, thought at the time it was the greatest thing on the planet, but afterwards we're like, oh, we fucked up royally. That's all you got to know about that album. And why do you think killers happen? <laughs> they couldn't, they record going to just spend all that money. It's like, you get your asses into the studio. That's not what we signed. We signed the hard rock band. Go play fucking hard rock. Come back and see us. Well, and, and, and that brings up a good point because there were people who were like, well, you know, maybe they should have, they should have skipped the elder and just done a great rock record. And, and again, I at least believe you you wouldn't get creatures if you didn't have the elder. The band the had to com completely and, bottom out and and risk ending their career to have the label and everybody say, get in and fucking record a rock album, basically slapping Gene and Paul back into reality. It needed to, you know, people say this all the time. You You can't, you have to hit rock bottom before you can start pulling yourself up again. Rock yeah. bottom was the elder. I was listening to Killers just yesterday, and I was wondering. It's a it's a bridge from the elder to creatures, mm -hmm. and I would love to know more about the four songs that were recorded for that because they sound so uniquely different from the elder. They sound different from creatures and, in my opinion, different from anything else that they've ever recorded. I, I wish we could find somebody that was around for those sessions that could give us some insight as to how they came about, how they were recorded, who was involved. Because they, I like them. I like the songs because they're uniquely different. And why was it just Paul's songs? Versus not one single song from Gene. I don't know. There's a lot of questions there. We've never really talked much about Killers because it's the transition and it was, you know, import only and all that kind of thing. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it, first of all, I mean, for, for those who don't know, Killers was not a U.S. release. It, it, it wasn't even talked about in the U.S. It was, it was basically a forced contractual album by the European label. What was that keyword, Michael? Forced. 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 Yeah. You, you, you got to get in and give. The Elder was dismal. You got to get in and give us something to keep this band alive. Give us a greatest hits. Throw four new songs on it. So, yeah, they quickly regroup. They get Michael James Jackson. They've got Bob Kulik. You know, is it is it is it more rock than The Elder was? Sure. But I think, Tommy, you hit a nail on the head. It was a transition to finally getting to Creatures, because it's definitely not Creature sounding. Although, could it could those four songs on Killers have been beefed up to fit Creatures? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they, they, they almost feel more like demos in a way. You know, because yeah. they're they're a little hollow and thin and the songs are there, but it's very milk toast, I guess, would be the term I would use. It's not good or bad. It's just if you listen to to a song off The Elder and then you listen to a song off of Killers and then you listen to a song off Creatures, all three of them have such vastly different sonic qualities to them that it's just it's what has been one of those things that I've been curious about. Yeah, look, um, if, if, Tommy, if you, if you get a chance, the mix of of uh, Partners in Crime, which is my favorite of the four, um, on, I want to say, the remix on the Every Time I Look at You single, because it's a definite remix, that to me is my go-to version of that. And I've never heard that. Um, I I think that the the song. I really wish that they would have pushed that at the time here. I I, I don't know what, what would have happened. I I couldn't tell you. Um, but you know, Kiss Kiss was starting to sound like Kiss again, and that's what makes those four songs so wonderful. I I know I've told this story before, but. Like Michael said, you know, go go back in time to 1981, 82. I was at the mall and um, I remember there was a, a, a magazine store that that sold foreign music magazines. And I read about Kiss Killers. And I was like, what the fuck is Kiss Killers? So I go to Harmony House, which was the local music um place i don't know if you guys had harmony houses where you were but that was the the local chain here and i had them look in their inventory or their imports and i'm like i said what is this i said i just read about it i didn't even see a cover i just read about it it's by the band kiss and keep in mind nothing nothing could have been as uncool as that at the time yeah yeah exactly. and, and and I know I told you the story about the cre when I ordered creatures from the records. That was a funny story too. But I went in there and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's an import." And I'm like, "Okay, what is it?" She started reading the songs on it, and it was funny because it was she was so blasé. I said, "Well, what's that?" She goes, "Detroit Rock City," and you know whatever. Shouted out loud. I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, "Well, that's weird." nowhere to run partners and what go back go back what was that what what, what are those <laughs> yeah so there was like what i think it was like two new songs per side and i'm like oh man i i just like can you how do what can you get that and they're like yeah but you have to put a down payment i'm like i, I have five dollars on me i'm like here here's my money and like two weeks later it showed up and they called me at home and i came and i picked it up and i just remember just staring at the fucking cover home. What the fuck? I, I had no clue. Because keep in mind, guy, timeline is everything. Like Michael said, that got not only none, I mean, less than zero mention in the music press here in the United States. Anyway. Exactly. Well, and see anyway. how I found it is, is I walked into gold down in the valley in Golden Valley and they had it. And I'm like, holy shit, what's this? That's how I found it. Yeah, I, I, 
I, I knew about it because I, I had, for two reasons, I had a pen pal in Australia that was telling me about the next album, Killers. Yeah. And then I want to say maybe I saw an ad or something like in an import Kerrang. And so for all I knew, and nothing said in, in those conversations that it was an import-only album. So my assumption was, okay, the new Kiss album that comes after The Elder is this album called Killers. And I would go in the Great American Music and don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. And I've told this before. I go in there one day to look for it. And there's this Creatures of the Night album on the new release section. I'm like, what the hell is this album? I've never heard of this. I've never seen this. I'm looking for killers, and yet this shows up. So I get this. It was it was a very odd, confusing time to be a Kiss fan back then. Very much. The yeah. younger fans, we didn't have Google. We didn't have any of this stuff. You had to literally bump into it on accident. You had you had to be paging through a magazine, see a little blurb that says, "Oh, Kiss is recording an album that might come out next spring." Or an ad that says coming soon on Vertigo Records, which would have been the label in Europe. You again, yeah, you're right. You had no way to get release dates. You had no, and at this point in time, I was going to say, Mark, you'd go ask a record store clerk about the new Kiss album. They just pretty much just tell you to get the fuck out of the store. They don't want to well, even I, I... look for information for you. If you're looking for Kiss, get the fuck out of here. I, rem I remember why I went into that store with the foreign things I was I, I was looking for. I wanted what was the European version of uh, of gold mine? What was that called? Record collector? Record collector. Still I, around. I think it, yeah, yeah. But I mean, back then, I remember because it was kind of expensive. Well, you know, back then, if you spent five dollars on a magazine, you were nuts. But I mean, I remember going. I would look in record collector because I think I was. This is what if I remember correctly. I'm probably right because I'm usually remember these things pretty well. I was looking for Ozzy Osbourne singles because Ozzy was starting to really, um, you know, really take off. And I accidentally saw the Kiss Killers. And, and I'm like, what, what the fuck is that? And again, it was just the weirdest fucking thing, man. I'm like, and I, and I remember just being puzzled. I'm like, well, Kiss is the greatest. I, you, you don't. I'm verbalizing it now, but this is what went on in my head. Come on, Kiss has a record out. How could I not know? There, because I had a subscription to Circus. I had a subscription to Cream. I, you know what I mean. I was just, you know, I read Hit Parader. I was just all over yep. all this. And I'm like, how the fuck? There's that's how come I, I I had to go to Harmony House. I'm like, there's no there's no way because I would know about it because I'm such a junkie. This stuff means everything to me. This is my like my whole world. And I'm like, they're like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, track listing. And I'm like, how the fuck does Kiss have a record? And I, it, I didn't see it in Circus. I didn't see it in, you know, Cream. I didn't see it in fucking It Prayer. And I didn't see it anywhere. How how was that possible? Well, yeah, I mean, guy, we guy, guys, tell me if you agree with this. As, as, as strange as it might have been being a fan back then, not just of Kiss, but any band, having no information, wasn't there kind of the 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 Christmas morning excitement when you would stumble across stuff like that, where you had no idea an album was coming out by this band or any band, and you walk in and you find a new album or you see it listed on a new release board coming next month? It 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 kind of had that Christmas morning feel of like, and and I'm talking Christmas before you knew the presents you were getting. Before you really knew how to snoop, before you really knew, oh, I can tell by the size of that box and shaking it that this is what's in there. I mean, the pure excitement of opening something up and going, I had no fucking idea. Thank you for the air hockey set. Thank you for the baseball glove or whatever it might be. Music back then had that because, again, you know, whether it was me learning about killers or walking in and finding creatures there is some there's an amazing excitement you get as a fan when you like holy crap i had no idea i can take this home you know you, today you know what 
maybe the first six singles sound like before an album comes out. You've seen three videos, you know the tour dates, you know all the artwork. Everything that's exciting has been removed from the equation in, in this day and age. Yeah. Back then, you opened up a circus magazine and you're like, it's an this is an ad for a new, I don't, you know, REO Speedwagon album, new Sticks album, new Cheap Trick album. You're like, what? I mean, that would be the first moment of learning something. But again, there's something about the going into that record store, Harmony House or Down in the Valley or Great American Music. You just walk in, not looking for anything. And you start flipping through the, the stacks of vinyl. And you're like, I've never seen this album by my favorite band. And that rush you get is, it's gone. I have i have not experienced that since those, those days. But isn't some of that also, um, part of youth? Sure. Oh, definitely. It's part of youth. It's part of discovering your music. And just, but, but there is something to be said that, you know, back in those days, you didn't have the internet revealing everything to you 12 right. months before every right. detail. I mean, we, we all know this as KISS fans, especially back then. Mark, you've said it. You, you go in and you go to the newsstand and you just pick up every music magazine and do a quick read through every music magazine. Is there a photo of Kiss? Is there a mention of Kiss? You know, I, I think I've mentioned this before. I was like conditioned to look for the double S's. I just scanned paragraphs. I wouldn't read. I just look double S. To, oh, no, it wasn't Kiss. It was a double S for something else. And you just keep scanning. And it's like, oh, shit. There's a one line mention of Kiss in this magazine. Buying it. <laughs> That's the way it was back then. Right now, now, now this information is is sent to you. You wake up and it's waiting in your inbox, and a link to buy it, and a link to listen to it. You know that wasn't the case back then. It wasn't the case. I mean, I rem I remember looking at the Killers album, and it's just like, this is the Elder costumes. Does yes. this mean this? Does this mean this is like an Elder part two? So I'm just like, I remember going, no. <laughs> like, and you know, it's pink colors. And I'm just like, whoa, this is just like so different looking than the elder, but it's the elder costumes. I don't know what am I, what is this? And it's it's only four new songs. Are these four new songs from the elder? You again. You had to be there as a kid to to understand what we're talking about of that yeah, it's utter hard. amazement and confusion at the same time. It's so hard to convey that to any of you that are younger and don't know this. But I remember being at the Met Center waiting in line for tickets for the Creature Show. We were outside in a line of people. It was cold out. I was talking to some folks around me, and I was talking about Two things. Number one, that Ace Fraley is not there, and it was Vinnie Vincent. The reason I knew that is because I read it in Kerrang! or one of those. Mm -hmm. Mark knows where it was posted. I can't remember. And the other was I was telling him about Killers. And I thought I was going to get in a fist fight with this fan who thought he was the Kiss fan. And he said, you're a fucking, basically, you're a liar. You know, not only is Ace Fraley going to be here. The killers, no killers record. There's well, it's no, no you know, it's no different than having that same discussion today on Facebook. <laughs> right. And just like, dude, you know, I'm sorry I don't have it in my car, but I didn't have a phone. I don't have a photo of it, you know? So it's just like, that's how sparse the information was back and then. And also that, that goes to tell you too, how little Kiss mattered in the music press. Enough with the revisionist history bullshit, please. They couldn't have got arrested. And I'm going to go a step further. That's one thing that really bothered me about the Queen Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Sorry, guys. After Hot Space, they couldn't get arrested here. They weren't no. the queen that you think they are. No. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Just yeah, that was their elder. There. Although I like that record. Oh, boy. Look at the time. <laughs> I, there was some cool stuff on it. 
I we well, have there, 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 but but there but no, you're couple. you're you're right, Mark. I I definitely remember a time where Queen was not cool anymore. Queen mm-hmm. anybody could have gotten a ticket to see Queen. There, you know, Judas Priest went through that. Iron Maiden, every band every that's band. been 40, 50 years around has had a period in their career. ACDC was the same way. Mm-hmm. Every band had this period where it's just like nobody gave a crap about them for a few years. That last album might have sucked. It wasn't quite what people expected. Arenas were half full. Oh, they're back to playing theaters. And I mean, so I, I applaud, you know, especially somebody like Iron Maiden and Priest, especially Iron Maiden, who's back to stadiums and worldwide sellouts. I mean, there was a period where Iron Maiden couldn't fucking give away tickets. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just like, they were has-beens. They're going to be playing clubs for the rest (laughs) of their lives. I remember, (laughs) I was it the, and this is when, this is when, uh, this is when Bruce, or uh, yeah, when Bruce was still, um, God, I want, I want to say it was Fear of the Dark. I remember they had free, lawn tickets at 7-Eleven. You could just go grab free lawn tickets. So yep. I, I hate when I when I run as you know I try to avoid this kind of stuff online. But guys, much like Mike and Tommy we said earlier, you can't bullshit me on this stuff. I was there. Yeah. I don't care what you fucking read on online. On, and, on and, and a not, wiki or some Facebook and again, group. I, you know, I just had this conversation with somebody, a, a younger person. Guys, in 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 79, when Kiss was struggling, you know, hold on, where's our Aerosmith guy I was gonna throw? Yeah, but, like, exactly. <laughs> Aerosmith and Ted Nugent were selling out stadiums across the fucking country. I, I don't care if you like it or you don't like it, or you want to defend Kiss to the to the nth degree, that's just what was happening. You know how come I know? I was there. And we're, and and listen, we're not saying Kiss or any of these bands sucked. We're just saying that's the reality. Yes. If, if if you've been a music fan long enough and pay attention, you will know music goes up and down, up and Even down. Even the and Rolling that's, Stones that's, suffered that, through it. it, it yes, exactly. Every work. band has the ups work. and downs. And and what differentiates bands that last 50 years to bands that last five years, the bands that last 50 years know how to ride that wave, get to the bottom, keep, don't give in because they know it's going to come back around, keep riding it up and down. Bands that only last five years get to the top, and when it starts going down, they throw the towel, and it's like, fuck, and it's over. Mike, my- a great, a great example. I, I just, it's a, it's a, it's a joke, you know, with between the three of us on the show. I found the Nugent ad from '82. Now, keep in mind, this is 1982. The, the makeout infra- ad. The, yeah. Well, I, well, guys, that was 1982. Not only did Ted sell out Kobo that day, it was a, that was a, a broadcast, an NBC, the source broadcast How, what was kiss doing in 1982 <laughs> not much well, nothing. Well, praying that hearts. they could make it to 1983 and but <laughs> here's the here's the thing the funny part is shortly there after ted's decline started going yep and then kiss started ascending in around 84 with lick it yep guys they're 83 it guys that's how they all go Mm-hmm. everybody's peaks and valleys and, and and it's funny just because you guys know i'm a big fan of ted's a few years later in 1990 was it 92 or 93 with damn yankees he co-writes a top three single where was kiss in 92 90 they weren't they were at the top of the charts and guys and- this is nothing I'm, I'm just saying that if you look at aerosmith before you know, uh, before the 87 gonna, I was, record. I was going to bring up Aerosmith. Look at they You couldn't fucking give away Aerosmith tickets during a bunch of the 80s. And then what happens? Somebody says, let's do a song with these guys run DMC and yes. see if that can buy you another year of your career. Boom. And lo and behold, boom. Mike, Mike, explosion. go a step further. Go a step fucking further. Done with mirrors in '86. Aerosmith, the reunion. They're bringing the original band back together. Did nothing 
No one well, cared. The tour did crap. well. Nobody people cared. To, but yeah, but the record didn't didn't do nope. shit until Mike Mike said. Then they they hooked up. Thank you, Rick Rubin, with uh, with Run DMC, and they had and they got a crew. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong here. They had to audition for a label deal. You know, and look at like I said, look at Heart. They come out with Heart's Greatest Hits in 1980. That's the one with the white background and all five mm-hmm. books. Great album, by the way. Great record. People love them. By 82, they're putting out Cities Burning for off of uh, private, aud- no, private audition. Private audition. audition. Great. I like that record. It is. And, and the next one after that with How Can I Refuse? Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Couldn't give them away. They couldn't sell out. A theater. Then all of a sudden, they get with what's his nuts, and Nevison. they put out Ron Nevison. Nevison. They put out the one with dreams on it and um, alone, and boom, like they never I went. Mean, look, cheap trick, same thing. They had Loister to get cult. that. Yes, cheap trick never. They came. had Loister. to get those makeovers. People who are Blue Oyster Cult fans, younger people who are Blue Oyster Cult fans today. Do you know Blue Oyster Cult used to headline and sell out arenas? Yes. They were huge. All of these bands. Fog had another band that back in the in the 70s, mm. massive sell out numbers. Sell yeah. Out Kobo All Guaranteed. these bands up and down and and the secret to success and this is it really is not a secret. It's just how do you make it from peak to peak to peak, knowing there's going to be a valley? And, you know, you just, I, I, I always have felt like Kiss during, like after Revenge and Carnival of Souls and when they did the convention tour, that was them in a valley figuring out how do we just sustain ourselves till the next peak comes along. What was that next peak? The reunion tour. But that's all these bands try to do is, okay, we got to just survive for the next year. What do we Rock do? The Nation was another valley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kiss from 2003 until Sonic Boom, they were lost. Mm-hmm. They, they, they had, it was just tour after tour with no real reason to tour. I mean, that in itself is one way bands today sustain themselves. Is that's that just, was when let's Kiss just go to her. They were they were introduced to the shed the shed life because Kiss yep. wasn't a shed band. They were an arena then. band. They were Correct. an indoor arena band. Why? Because they liked the ability to have the controlled indoor environment of lighting and pyro and everything else. But you got to get out into the sheds to play to as many people as possible and you do those summer shed tours it, it changes everything so yeah i mean back to what we were saying it's like we were there if you were there you know it if you weren't there and you read about it trust us it's it, it you just you really had to be there to understand what we were saying around the elder once again kiss was literally dead in the u.s Dead. Hey, Mike, D-O-A. I want to touch on something here that touches every KISS fan here. It wasn't that long ago, 2012, that Def Leppard was opening for KISS on yep. their Shed Tour. Anyone mm-hmm. see where they played the last two summers? Was it Stadium Tour? Yeah, they're playing with other bands. But I just think the people came of age and they're... You know what I mean? The way that it's promoted and stuff. During slang, they, couldn't give them away. Ex- Tommy, that's exactly the point I was trying to make is everybody's career, everybody's kiss on down. If you're if you are around up. long enough, you will. There's there isn't a band. Uh, somebody will prove me wrong. There isn't a band that I know of that got to the top and has stayed at the top for decades. There's I always the Sto- been I think the Stones. Because the Stones did. No, um, they had they, they had made, dirty work, dude. They, no, 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 that, dirty work in, in the in the eighties. But th- they still sold tickets. They 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 still were able. Maybe to Met- sell maybe out. Metallica. Yeah, and you too. But but again yeah, but, again but, but now just but a now handful. We, it's just a handful, and and most of these bands we just mentioned, 
are staying at the top in a touring capacity. They're not selling records anymore. Right. Nobody fucking Correct. sells records anymore. Correct. As good as the last Johnny Rolling K. Stones Swizzle. album is, nobody I, buys I, it. I actually like Dirty Work. I think uh, had it. Oh, with I don't you think there's anything wrong with it. One hit to the body is phenomenal. Oh my god, that's what I because you're a Stones fan too. Would people like rip on that? I'm like, are you kidding? That's a really good record. I like a lot of songs. Yeah, no, I think like Bridges to Babylon is pure shit, but you know. Yeah, not crazy about that yeah, one. Yeah, but no, everyone has an elder. That's well, true. again, again, if you, if you're Black a band that's been around right. 50 years, you're going to have an elder in your career somewhere. Mm -hmm. Might be a different reason you did your version of the elder, but you're going to have that album that just landed like a fucking turd in a punch bowl. Bla yep. <laughs> yep. Black and blue, <laughs> and, I thought was another stinker. <laughs> Yeah, I mean every every band has had one of those albums there where they look back and go, "Fuck, why did we ever do that album? That was a terrible album. We listened to the wrong people. Well, it was the wrong producer. It was the wrong." Everybody has that, and again, what separates the winners from the losers is the winners don't dwell on that turd in a punch bowl, and they just figure out how to move past it and keep doing it and keep delivering because wow. something's gonna hit. Tommy, Tommy, what came after Black and Blue, Tommy? It's only rock and roll, but what, I like it. No, what came after Black and Blue? Some girls. It, Boom. No, it's, it's only rock and roll is after that. And then was it? Girls. Yeah. And then ah, some okay. girls. Well, I was an album. Because one. then they were on Wait. the verge of another collapse with emotional rescue because that was not great. Then what do they do? They come out with Tattoo You and boom. Boom. Yep. yep. By the way, I, I like like I, Crazy Mama is really cool. There's a there's some pretty pretty good too. They went a little too funky, I guess, on that record. It wasn't rocky. Uh, no, enough. and that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just it was not perceived very well. Other than I think Sebastian Bach told me that Black and Blue is his favorite Rolling Stones record, and I don't know what's wrong with that boy. <laughs> we'll that's a whole episode Human Race is, is, is the best Skid Row album. I love subhuman rights. That that to me. Well, is I haven't had that discussion with him. I just remember him. We were talking about the Rolling Stones. And he was trying to tell me that Black and Blue is their best record. I'm like, what's wrong with you? No, not even close. Not even I know. close. I know. So, Sebastian, if you're listening this week, you are fucking wrong, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and back to listen. We're not going to get into what we were going to talk about today because we want to get out of here early because Mark's got some stuff to deal with, but. The unpopular kiss opinions. I, I, I first I want to say, don't be ashamed to share your unpopular opinion. Yeah, that's why we did this. Is it's it's that opinion is right for you. It doesn't matter whether anybody else likes it, and it doesn't matter if. And listen, I had to shut down quite a few fans who kept coming in going. I'm tired of these unpopular opinions. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> it's like, okay, bye. Let me block you. Because this is what freaking social media is supposed to be about. People sharing what they like, what they don't like, their views on something. There's this cool feature, not just at Facebook, but every social media thing out there. If you don't like it, scroll. And if we didn't it's gone. want to know, we it's wouldn't gone. Ask. Yeah, it's gone. But here's the other thing. If it's on Facebook, do you know you can actually hit those three little dots in the upper right corner of a post? And you can put three sides of the coin snooze us for 30 days. So for the next 30 days, you won't see any post from three sides of the coin because within 30 days, it's going to die down and it's going to get quiet again. Listen, it's been a week and it's already died down significantly in, in a week's time frame. So if you don't like it, we say this all the time, we don't care. I loved seeing everybody sharing. There were people who were like, wow, you know, I've never really commented before, but I feel like I want to share my first comment. Here's my unpopular opinion. I'm like, good. Amen. Good for you. Yeah. You know, speaking speaking of those fans, Tommy, you and I just made a great point uh, about Kiss. We did. You and I are, are the same age, and they're stone snobs who think we're fucking idiots because we love some girls. The, they're, the, the I've old never parents, heard that. Really? Oh, my God, yes. The old, they, they think after exile, everything ended. 
Oh well, if fuck you, them because that's what I mean. But but it's kind of like kind of like how we're you. I guess younger fans are like I don't know how you don't like the elder. I get it that you came in in 1995 and discovered Kiss, and the elder was important to you. I get that, and I understand that. It's the same thing with Tommy and I loving mid 70s Stones. By the time those records were released, they already had a pretty impressive catalog out. And some of the older fans, because I've got older siblings and some of the guys they play hockey with, they all say the same thing. Oh, after Exile, they, you know, they just, Look, I'm like, no, no don't go Exile wrong. is Exile. great. Turn on the run. There's so much great stuff on that record. But that's like saying, oh, gee, Elton John's best album is Good by Yellow Brick Road, which I would say is true. But that doesn't mean that Captain Fantastic wasn't awesome. And that came after. Yeah, it's just, exactly. People are just they get stuck in this rut and it's like, whatever. I, I still know people who are, you know, older than me who give up, who gave up on Kiss at Destroyer. They're oh, like, oh, oh God, I still run. I still yeah. run into them online. It's like, I, yeah, any, anything, any, maybe, maybe they went to rock and roll over anything after rock and roll over. is just terrible. It's not, it's not hard rock. It's not, it's just like, dude, I, that's fine. If you think that, but I didn't discover kiss until rock and roll. over. I mean, is it my fault then that I didn't get to live through the 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 early albums as they were released? No, this is when it it timeline, 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 timeline. We always go back to Andy Beersack. He discovered yeah. Kiss on the Revenge album, right? And he's, he's as big a Kiss wrong. fan as anybody out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we 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 read that comment about how he'd go to the kiss expos in indianapolis with his dad when he was a kid it was the first time he ever performed in public in front of an audience yeah yeah trust so, me I, I i think about that stuff especially the younger fans my son said it to me you know my my son's 32 now but he was like you know kiss to me was always eric and tommy because that's he he went to his we first knew. show yeah that's yeah. he went to his first show on the Rock the Nation tour. It was the first concert he ever went to. That Tommy and Eric were in the band. That's who <laughs> Kiss was to him. And you know what, guys? He's not wrong. I mean, if they, right. whenever you came in, who was ever in the band, and that's who you like, yes, you're going to realize there's past history, but those are my guys, and there's mm. nothing wrong with it. On a side note, did the house thing work out for him? Yes, yes. Matter of fact. Yeah, I uh, forgot to ask. Okay. Yes. Good. Everything. Uh, everything. Uh, everything Speechy. went perfect. Good. Yep. All right. Well, let let's save what we were going to talk about for this next week. week for next week because it's definitely a fun discussion and it's yes. kind of got a little bit of the unpopular opinion feel to it. It's going to be a good one you can play along with. It's a good one you can leave comments online, and it's a good one where you can piss off the fans who don't want to read all this stuff. So we'll save that for next week. This was a fun discussion. I do want to mention real quick, by the time you're watching or listening to this episode, I'm on the latest episode of the KISS FAQ podcast. Nice. As a guest. Excellent. Julian invited me on there. Nice. Made a, made a big announcement how I'm going to be taking over moderation of the FAQ board. <laughs> Didn't say Really? That's fucking awesome. That's what he said. That's what he said. I'm just waiting for my credentials. <laughs> Get out oh. the ban hammer. Ban, 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 ban. I'm cleaning house. Cleaning house over there. <laughs> oh, as uh, uh, what's the comedian uh, that warms the cockles of my heart? Maybe the sub cockles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but it, it, it was a fun episode. Dennis Leary. Julie Julian and I do a lot of reminiscing back to the very early days of Kiss on the Internet. Because those who may not know, Julian was one of the very first moderators on the Kiss Online message board when I launched yep. that. So he was there through all of that before he ever had his FAQ message board. 
So we talk about a lot of the stuff that went on back then, how it's similar to what's going on now. Um, it was, it's a fun discussion, especially if you want some history of, of this kiss on the internet world that we all take for granted now. It wasn't that long ago, 1995, 98, that it was a complete, completely different world back then completely different world so it's a yeah. fun episode go check out the kiss faq podcast with myself as a guest on there um i don't think the only the only kiss news if it's news kiss released a whole bunch of animalized merchandise ah. horrendous looking what about that all over animal print shirt did anyone oh buy it? If you bought that, could you put it on and take a picture just so we can see proof that somebody actually bought it? Yeah, that I gotta see. And let me know I, if you're single or married. And if you are married, are you still married after buying that and wearing it in front of your wife? I, I will tell you, I did buy, I haven't received it yet, but I did get the message that it's on the way. Did you guys see the the Blacklight 76 era type poster that uh, Kiss Online just did? No. Yeah, I, I uh, when I get it, I'll I'll show it to you. But uh, yeah, I just I just ordered that. Well, that was a few weeks ago. I just I it was one of those random things that popped up from Kiss Online. I'm like, and that's how come you know I almost feel like you know make something cool and I'll buy it. You know, I really like. We've always said that. I know. Just I know. Make something cool that Kiss fans really want, and we will buy stuff. And, and look, if you bought that that animalized shirt okay i guess but i i look at shit like that and i'm like like you said like where would you wear that to? I, I don't see any place where that's apropos anywhere i just just and then the kiss logo on it's like this big at the bottom i'm like if you're trying to like go hey you know i will tell you know it's funny because our, our good buddy adrian posted pictures online with this dynasty um yeah. baseball shirt i love that thing you know i'm just trying to pare down some of my i i had to fight myself because i wanted one and and it wasn't bad it was only like 100 bucks which if you buy baseball jerseys you know it isn't terrible and i thought it looked great the stitching looked wonderful i kind of kicking myself that i didn't get because they're sold out now but that's a case in point i'm like you know that's cool i i i really like that there are sometimes they do hit the, you know, the ball out of the park and then other times, but I don't know. I mean, if you bought it, you know, again, if you bought it and you like it, good for you. Thumbs up. I'm just, I'm telling you, I looked at that and I was just like, this, ugh, it's kind of oh, cringy. And, and by stuff. the way, uh, by the way, kiss online guys, can we not shun the other band members who were on the thing? Cause I don't think really think there's, isn't, I only I looked at it quickly, but if my memory serves, and I think it does, there's no solo Bruce or Eric pin, I think, in the pin set for the animal. I think it's Gene and Paul, and then it's like, I don't know, an album. I guess covered. I didn't know. I didn't pay attention. I, I'll put it this way. I could I could be wrong, but they, I think if they do these, you know, animal eyes or, and all kidding aside, they do a, a Crazy Nights one or whatever. Put Bruce and Eric front and center. And that, by the way, I don't hate Eric Carr. I'm sorry. But if I point out obvious things, don't be mad at me, okay? Um, if you want to say you played great on Asylum, fine. You listen to those bootlegs. Not me. Fucking horrible. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, I want whatever era correct. That's what I want. Yeah. Don't, I, don't I, shun that. And, and look. When you talk about the Creatures Tour, there's four guys in the band you have to talk about. Sorry, it, yeah, it just is. Yeah. Or yeah. the Lick It Up Tour. Sorry. just this, I mean, th th is. This, this is like, you know, a few years ago when Motley Crue was doing all of their 40th anniversary stuff. And it's like, how are you celebrating the 40th anniversary of Motley Crue, but you're completely ignoring John Karabi's album? Wrong. You completely it, ignored New Tattoo. Like... Like they didn't even exist. And it's like, no. And and so to your point, Mark, it's like if you're gonna celebrate animalize, you celebrate that.
expand on MLS. Yes. Don't just celebrate Gene and Paul on every album. Celebrate the entire band. Yeah. By the way, new tattoo fucking rules. Oh, I love that album. Record. It's a I love great it. record. I, I went to that tour. Record, that's a great yeah. album. I fucking love new tattoo. I yep. think that blows away Dr. Feel Good by like a billion fucking miles. The songs are better. It's way more fucking rocking. Yeah, the other ones had the big hit. Yeah, guys, it was a different time. I'm saying song for song, I would I would much, much, that, that, much that, rather. That was Motley Crue in one of those valleys yes. just trying to ride it out. Yep. And I know Tommy feels the same way. Saints of Los Angeles is a masterpiece. I fucking I love, love that record. Me too. Six Equal Trouble is one of my favorite Motley Dude, Crue there's not a weak track on that album. That just album another fucking Psycho, smooth. White oh. Trash Circus. Oh. My God, yeah, every it's, song, it's, it's brilliant. every song's great. I know it is. Yeah, I, I, I just weird. can't stand bands that like we're celebrating our entire history as a band, except, except this. for this album, this album, and these two albums over here. It's like then you're not fucking celebrating it. Well, you're just, not. I mean, let's face it. During the reunion, even on those like VH1 specials and stuff, they're like, like, oh, and we didn't want to make it for viewers. I no, know, dude. I know. No, no, no. And 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 look, for as much as I didn't like some of the touring moments and stuff, look, Kiss sold a boatload of records. You from you M can't deny that during yeah. the '80s, Kiss was successful in they were. selling I mean, albums were they... and tours. Yes, they they did. Were okay. were, were, were were they 1978 level Kiss success? No, but again, what is it? 10 million albums they sold during during the 80s at least that listen what band wouldn't love that sort of failure on their career i i love paul <laughs> right. stanley's comment he's like our lowest point was like hall of fame era for other fucking bands you know what i mean that's the part people go oh look you were struggling struggling i mean i guess compared to what they were doing in 77 and 70 through 79 yeah i guess maybe but um, uh, platinum, multi platinum, you know, many platinum albums in a row, gold and platinum. Uh, ba 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 basically, the 80s returned yeah. Kiss to getting album awards because they didn't get an album reward for Creatures or Elder or Unmasked when those came out. I, I know I, it's 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 insane. Um, as mentioned earlier, I gotta get the hell out of here so. Um, so ho ho homework for today, I don't know, co co comment on what we talked about, the peaks and valleys, pick a band, talk about the peaks up, and Mike, valleys of Mike, a band you like. If, if you're our age, when did you find out about Killers? How did you find out? I'd How love did to you find, find out? Yeah. yeah. Sorry yeah. if it doesn't count if you came in in 95 because it was already part of the book. It, it, it was already, <laughs> but, and maybe if it wasn't Killers, but free internet free internet how did you find out about a new album from a favorite band I, I i can say a lot of mine was either in the magazines or like i remember music land used to have a, a a whiteboard behind the counter new releases but they'd only list like 10 and they only listed the Bruce Springsteen's, the Rolling Stones, the Doors, that type of crap. You know, by by the time the Elder was coming out, Kiss was definitely not getting up on a wall for a new release mention. No. <laughs> Never. You know, it wouldn't make the flyers. Sometimes a radio station would have a flyer of, oh, here's the albums that are coming out in the next month. How did you learn about music coming out? All right. That's it. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. We'll see everybody next week. You have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-4771. Sides of the coin provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.